Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Toronto FC, Montreal Impact 401 Derby. Would TFC get their first win of the MLS season? What about the Montreal Impact? Could they prove that they're once again the best team in the country? Who would be the key man? Jovinko, Piatti. Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So, on this edition of the interviews, we're going to briefly break down the Montreal Impact against TFC. So Montreal against Toronto, 4-1 Derby. TFC looking for their first win of the MLS season. When we look at the board, we got TFC in the red, we got Montreal in the blue. What one of the big factors in this game was that this 3-5-2 against 3-5-2. When we see identical systems play against each other, what happens is that most times the both teams cancel each other out. We look at the board, we got TFC in the red. 3-5-2, Jovinko out the door up front and midfield. They have Akeshte, they have Osario, they have, du they have Bradley. And out at, in the wide areas, they have Van Der Veel and they have Ashton Morgan. When you look at what Montreal were doing, 3-5-2 as well. Vargas and Piatti up front and midfield. They have Krolicki, Piet, and they have... Tighter and then on the flanks and wing back positions they have Daniel Lovett and they have Petrasso. What went right? What went wrong? Both sides kind of canceled each other out as we said. Wings backs pressed the wing backs. The midfielders kind of kept the midfielders at bay. And basically up front, what we saw the difference was was that Jovinko and Altidore didn't do much in terms of what they did without the ball. Perhaps the CONCACAF Champions League offered a bit of fatigue for the TFC side. and That's why they kind of looked a bit sluggish throughout the game. Whereas Montreal, they looked to target Michael Bradley. That's one of the key talking points here. They sat in between him, they let the center backs push forward. The Montreal center backs were able to push forward as well, but they sat in between Bradley, and at times they would have Piet push up front to ensure that Bradley couldn't get on the ball. If Vargas pressed, there was at least B. Piatti on him, and then Piet looking to get forward. Sometimes we saw Bradley push to Piet as well, but for the most part, that was what was going on there. When we look at the key chances in the first half, the key man was Piatti. What, how did that stem? Well, basically, TFC were targeted in that zone. We saw this against Columbus, but in Columbus, Piatti isn't the type of player that Higuain is where he could pop up into these pockets of spaces, he could drop deeper, more of a passer, likes to create chances, forces Bradley to track his movement. What they did here is Piatti was mo is more of an attacking mind number 10, likes to score goals, and without a center forward in Mancuso, they basically lacked a penalty box presence, so crosses coming in didn't really matter. Vargas was dropping deep, Piatti was running into the channels, Piatti was dropping deep but when you look at Piatti's overall performance he kind of was poor in the final third in terms of his distribution he got into good positions but was kind of selfish didn't really have many players around him to connect with and that was a big issue so what happened was that Montreal pressed from the front and they got a lot of results you look at one of their first chances Piat steps to Bradley dispossesses him ball played into Piatti breaks into the box can't get his shot can't get his pass back into Vargas that's a wasted opportunity we look at another opportunity where what they did is Vargas pressed um, Piet pressed Bradley you had Piatti stepping forward and then you had Jovinko dropping a bit deeper and then you had a center back following him and when the center back follows him he plays a poor pass into Bradley it falls to Piet plays in Piatti tries to cut it back in on more and obviously that chance is broken down. That's another golden opportunity for TFs for Montreal. We'll get them back there. And we'll get you back there. And what happens that when you look at the goal as well, it's another opportunity where Piet dispossesses Bradley and what happened, or Bradley is dispossessed in midfield. And what happens is that he's dispossessed. Piatti picks up the ball, finds Vargas in the right channel. Obviously, he's near the box. His shot is deflected against past Bono. It is a bit lucky, but it's the template to what Montreal were doing well, and they finally reaped rewards for it. And as the half wore on, there were still two other chances where Piatti. Piatti broke in free. You look at the opportunity where Tider, who grew in influence towards the end of the half and started the second half, just simply ran past Jonathan Nazario, I'm running past the catch day, um, plays a chance in for 
Piazzi obviously Hagelin blocked it. Then you look at another opportunity where he simply dispossessed Osario. So you dispossessed Osario, and the other opportunity simply ran past a cache. Both chances led to Piatti getting on the ball. One was created by Vargas, one was simply played into Piatti. Both opportunities were blocked by Hagelin. You think that TFC would change things in the second half? That didn't really happen. And in the in the dying minutes or the first few minutes of the second half, it's again Piatti just running towards Bradley. Pressing him, tighter breaks into the box, runs past Bradley, should score, doesn't score. Look at another opportunity where Tider is able to just step into midfield, no one presses him, plays a 1 2 with Piatti, breaks into the box, should score again, but pokes his shot inches wide. TFC needed to make a change. They finally did. They brought on Oro, they brought on Hasler, they brought on Delgado, switched to a 4-4-2, and it wasn't really much of a diamond. What happened there was, we'll get the midfield back there. Montreal dropped a bit deeper. Their wing backs got pushed back a bit. 4-4-2. And what it kind of looked like was more of this. Hasler a bit higher. You have the forwards there. Bradley Nazario and Delgado was there, but this is basically what it was a bit lopsided What happened was that TFC grew into the game because Montreal's pressing Decreased their energy levels dipped and it was Jovinko who turned the game on its head Dropping a bit deeper looking to link play finding space between the lines to make things happen and that was pivotal as well we look at opportunities where he combined with Altador. There was one time where he simply drifted across the lines, clipped the ball through Krolicki's legs, clipped the ball over the box. Altador gets in, should score, guides his effort wide. You look at an opportunity where he drops deep, combines with Bradley. Bradley charges into the box. Bradley forces a save from Evan Bush. There was a, more opportunities, one where he simply just poked the ball through the center back's legs, gets a shot on goal, just flashes inches wide of the net. It was basically the Jovinko show, not similar to what happened in midweek and the CONCACAF Champions League second leg against Tigres, but obviously it's just more space in midfield, not really moving to the left as much, but he did on occasions. One twos with Altador. Altador also had an opportunity where Delgado played him in, turns Fanny, pokes the ball past Bush, but it's cleared off the line. And TFC did create their chances. They did look a bit better in the second half because Montreal dipped. There wasn't much pressure on Bradley. The formation change helped. Hasler and Delgado offered more energy. They were winning second balls and they just looked like they were going to score, but it didn't happen. And this is what happens when you wait until late to really impact the game or change the game. Not to say that it was bad fault but they just weren't up for it they targeted Bradley and it looks like something a common theme that teams will do we didn't see Tigres do it we didn't really see the rapid do it but so far in MLS play we've seen Columbus do it with a creative number 10 and with great team pressing and now we see Montreal do it as well with more of a goal scoring number 10 and Piatti harmed them Higuain harmed them and as we look at it TFC are winless to start the season two losses no wins and they'll be looking to bounce back after the international break but this is a template that other MLS teams might use to prevent them from defending their MLS Cup title. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.